We made it, team. It is simply incredible to realize that we are already wrapping up this semester and in two short weeks, the craziness that is 2020. Now, starting nine months ago, we taught school in ways that we would have never imagined. And we proved to ourselves as educators and as a community just what is possible when we work together. We embraced the mission to make sure learning happened for our students every day. On Monday, we set aside a day to recognize our Henry County School heroes. But honestly, we could recognize our heroes every single day. Ever since I was a little girl, I have seen teachers as my heroes. And as a kid, teachers were the people I wanted to be most like. But today, my admiration and appreciation have risen to a whole new level. I wanna personally thank you for a job well done this semester. I wanna thank you for reinventing this profession so that kids in Henry County could be connected to a hero and have access to continuing their learning. It has been so important to listen to the perspectives of our heroes, our teachers, and make adjustments to our plan. Today, I am pleased to share with you a conversation in this weekly message with our district's teachers of the year who also serve as the officers of my teacher advisories. As we acknowledge the complexity of this work and get better as an organization for our employees and our students, I am committed to listening, learning, and continuing to evolve how we bring an education to life for our kids. Please join me as I review the adjustments that the Board of Education discussed to prepare for a strong and productive start to the second semester. Let me introduce you to Tabitha Wesley from Timber Ridge Elementary, Melanie Kellum from McDonough Middle School, and James Forsyth from Luella High School. Let's get started. Well, welcome to a conversation with our District Teachers of the Year. I'd love to start with some quick introductions around the screen. So Tabitha, can you start us off? Yeah, my name is Tabitha Wesley, and I'm the Instructional and Personalized Learning Lead Teacher at Timberidge Elementary and the Elementary Teacher of the Year for Henry County. Thanks, Tabitha. It is great to see you today. How about you, Melanie? Hi, my name is Melanie Kellum, and I am the Social Studies Teacher, 8th grade Social Studies Teacher at McDonough Middle School. I'm also the Social Studies Department Chair, and I am the Middle School Teacher of the Year for Henry County Schools. Thanks, Melanie. It's also great to see you. And how about James? Can you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm James Forsyth. I am an exceptional student education teacher at Lowell High School, and I am the high school teacher of the year finalist. Thanks, James. Well, it's great to be with the three of you today. And I think our objective is to just have a conversation about how we prepare as a profession for the new year and what kind of adjustments we can make that are really a reflection of some previous conversations you all have led with teachers. So I know y'all have some questions and I look forward to getting started. So I think, Tabitha, do you want to kick us off with um, some, of the, some of the conversation we've been having? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, my biggest concern and question I have is for the adjustments and changes that teachers are going to be making after the Christmas and holiday season um, in regards to purchasing more hybrid learning materials and ways to be the best versions of themselves here in the classroom virtually and face-to-face. Good question. Tabitha, isn't it amazing what this um, season has demanded of teachers in the classroom? And so a couple of things that the Board of Education committed to is first and foremost, uh, replenishing the PPE materials that were issued to schools back in um, August and September. So re replenishing all of the masks that can be on hand for both our buses as well as our schools, should anyone arrive without one. And each of our teachers and all employees receiving two packages of the um, sanitizing wipes. Um, but, but not to suggest that that's ever been enough, we are able to make an additional investment in each of our schools with $2,000 more of the CARES funds for every school to supplement the sort of standard issued PPE materials that could support with some of the hybrid teaching equipment. It could also support with supplementing um, any of the safety or health and wellness strategies that uh, an individual school's playbook deploys. Um, so I think we're getting ready for the second semester, like, because it'll be here in no time. Yeah, no, I think that's phenomenal, especially because we don't know until we've experienced um, what we need, you know, and so it's so, so important true. that 
teachers have practice, they have done the work. And so now it's time to kind of take a moment and reflect on what we need now and how can we be better? And you guys are giving us that chance to kind of refill our buckets, so. I think you're right, Tabitha. It's so customized too, because we've now seen some practices that are really effective and other teachers are able to learn from one another. It's like, okay, yes, that's the right investment to make in the tools for my instruction. Um, and so I think it'll just be the right refreshment for the start to our, our second semester. Yeah, I think teachers are gonna do great things, so. Awesome, now Melanie, tell me a little bit about your questions. My question pertains to um, the pacing and learning progressions for next semester. And we're trying to, with teachers doing hybrid, um, stretching the planning time and trying to plan for those hybrid models has changed and we've had to make adjustments. How will the district provide support in the area of learning progressions and um, the teaching content? Yeah, first and foremost, um, there is nothing common about this school year. So there's just nothing common about the way we have to approach our teaching and learning practices. So we know the value that progressions play so that a student's experience, no matter their classroom, no matter their school, has a level of consistency and reliability. And any student that has to change schools in the middle of a year will not have massive gaps in their learning experience because schools are on um, differing pacing. We know the why, but we also know we've got to be capable of customizing our approach for this unique year. So the progressions for second semester will all be adjusted for two things. The first is to accommodate for the decrease in instructional days because they have been converted to teacher work days. And I'm happy to share that calendar in a minute if you want to talk through that. And the second adjustment will be to allow for two weeks at the start of the semester for reteaching of either first semester content or even the reteaching of foundational skills essential for success in second semester content. Um, I think that'll be a great way for every teacher to be able to know their kids personally and meet their students' needs directly in order to get that second semester pacing back up to speed. Um, and so that's a little bit about the progression adjustments that you can expect. And, um, and they are being crafted with the contribution of teachers who are in the classroom and will be shared, uh, I'm certain, very shortly. So um, you mentioned that um, we've added some teacher planning days to the calendar. And so I know that a lot of teachers are wondering how those days will be structured. Yeah, you know, I actually, why don't I go ahead and share that on the screen so we can look at this calendar. Um, can you see that on, on your screen right now? Yes. So the Board of Education actually adjusted the second semester calendar. And although that's very uncustomary, I think it's a reflection of really the conversation that teachers brought to my attention as well as the attention of the Board of Education. That this is complex. Like we really do need some additional time to adequately prepare for the instructional responsibilities. So as you can see right here, starting with the sixth, teachers will actually have the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth now as teacher work days. Um, you can actually see in the legend down here that the teacher work days, January 6th through 8th, and then January 29th, February 12th, March 12th, April 23rd, and May 26th have now all been added to this calendar as teacher work days. So students will not be in attendance at school and it is really designed for unstructured planning and preparation. Now, of course, we do know some teachers prefer and are more successful planning collaboratively. So there could be some of the informal collaborative planning that unfolds, but it is really to be dedicated as unstructured, no meeting days. It's really about planning and preparation um, for, for the teachers. I think it's an important investment in time, which is invaluable, but it's also a recognition that it's an uncommon year, and so we just can't continue to do things in common ways, and I'm optimistic this will equip our teachers with just a little more space mentally and physically in order to be better prepared for their kiddos. That is such an amazing news and our district to be able to pivot and make those changes and those adjustments to address the needs of teachers and students is, um, is wonderful. And I, I can't wait 
Um, it is exciting, but you know what? It really came from this group right here and the teachers of the year on the advisory that you represent being really solution driven in how we um, get better and get better and get better. And um, and so really thank you all for the recommendation you've brought and the real alignment we can then have to the boardroom to actually make that adjustment. So that's all for y'all. Yeah, I think I wrote. Oh, go ahead, Tabitha. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I wrote on my notes last night at the board meeting. They listened. I wrote they like listened. exclamation points. <laughs> well, you, you've been incredibly instrumental in crafting the solutions, and that makes it really um, more productive in, in the listening process. So appreciate, um, just really appreciate you being, being really clear about how we can do this better. All right, James, what questions do you have? Well, I second with Tabitha said we were really thankful that uh, our concerns were you know, brought to the table and that they were turned into solutions. Um, and I'm just really thankful that, uh, that the district you know, is giving us the opportunity to plan and to make time because from those plans are going to come better instruction and more uh, successful experiences for our students. So yes, I agree. Thank you. Um, my concern is um, although our, as a district and as a county, we have followed that playbook and I think everyone has really bought into the importance of being safe and following the procedures. We do have these cases, um, either internal or external, where people are being exposed and they are, um, you know, uh, they're coming down with, uh, with the virus, with COVID, and it's putting quite the strain, it seems, on some schools. Um, so my concern are, is this strain as well and the quarantine requirements? And then um, what the district is doing to um, support um, the schools uh, during this time? Yes, yeah, certainly a very, um, un, you know, just unusual responsibility on schools is to manage the health of every individual in the school in quite this um, direct of a way. So the quarantine impact on schools has certainly caused a strain on supervision. There's no, there's no way to suggest otherwise. Um, our district approved um, plan to reopen schools actually does allow for a grade level closure or a school closure or an even a cluster closure if that strain on supervision is unmanageable or unsafe. And recently we actually did um, proceed with closing Tussahaw Elementary School because of that very reason. Um, but we also know that families who opted for an on-campus learning in, um, environment um, are optimistic that it can be a stable and reliable environment. And 94% of our kids have actually had an uninterrupted experience. But when it is interrupted, it feels really huge. And so the entire organization is focused on prioritizing what happens in schools. Now that's always been the case, but it's not always been demonstrated. And I, um, I'm really encouraged by what we now call our EAST team, which is any professional who's certified, who's not serving in a school is really on a substitute list. And every day we review the staffing of every single one of our 52 schools. And then we deploy EAST team members to those schools, sometimes to be a classroom teacher substitute, sometimes to be a paraprofessional substitute, or sometimes to be a substitute for the leadership team, principal, AP, um, or the larger leadership structure of the, organ of the school. And it's been profoundly encouraging because first of all, it is a real sense of an organization that realizes the core business is happening in classrooms. And that's what everybody's professional responsibility has to be first and foremost. But secondly, the East team caused there to be an entirely second East team that we do not call the West team, but it's all of our classified employees who do not currently serve in schools. And we have seen classified employees de deployed to stand up front offices when an entire front office would be quarantined or to stand up the support services in um, the cafeteria. And even how our transportation services is supporting one another with supervisors and directors actually um, supporting the running of routes. It's really an all in mentality. And um, I think it's a, it's a differentiator for our organization that hasn't been done a lot in, um, in, in really in public education. And, um, and so I'm really proud of that, but it still doesn't, 
it doesn't dismiss the reality that this is a challenging time and one that we're all working together to keep ourselves healthy so that we can also support each other in the workplace. And last thing I'll mention is the CDC did change their quarantine requirements. And although we didn't immediately follow that change because we wanted to really go through the process of preparing starting in the new year, anyone exposed to a COVID positive diagnosis will now quarantine for seven days if they have a negative test or 10 days with no symptoms if they don't have a test. And so that will also shorten the time frame that people feel um, separate from their, their workspace. Um, but I uh, appreciate you bringing that up. And I also do know that teachers and leaders are working together to combine classes and to fill in for other people's classes at different times. And that's just not the way we want to do business for the long haul, which is why in January, it's time to start talking about 21, 22 school year. So we know how we structure this on the front end. That's right. Thank you for that. I love the boots on the ground approach because, uh, you know, just next man up, you know, we're all in this together. We all have the same goals and uh, student learning is certainly the most important aspect of, our, of what we do each day. So thank you for that. And I know for a fact that the East teams is boosting morale. When, um, when I came in the building the other day and I saw that we had district support in my hallway because I'm trying to figure out what we're going to do. And they already had the plan and they were there to help and they were very quick and stepped right in and there was no, um, no discrepancies and we had a great day. And so I appreciate that support and help. And it did really boost us up to know that our district has our back and the support even in the classroom with our own bodies in our own time. So we do appreciate that. Yes. Yeah, I think it's phenomenal. I have heard teachers talk about, oh, well, if the district only knew and it's like, yeah. And then you start seeing all these district people come in and you're like, um, you're, you're just, you're kind of wowed a little bit, you know, like it's, it's just a no excuses everyone's going to put forth what they need to. And um, it's, it's very impressive. I've never worked for a district that um, you saw this many people from the board office and the district office that are coming in. And I definitely think you should call the other side, the West team. I think that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's been born here and we, we will speak it into existence. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just think if we can continue to be a community who acknowledges the imperfections of this season, extends grace beyond compare and, um, and simultaneously keeps the lines of communication open so that we can continue to find the next right solution, the next right thing, and, um, and know that we've been called to a public service for our community in a season that we would have never picked or designed, but that because we're doing it together, like really amazing things are happening. And I really feel proud of our professionals and really, at this point, it's probably time to say to not only each of you, but to our entire staff in Henry County Schools, we should hope you get a long nap over the holiday and a great refreshing break. And we wish you the best of a new year. We will see you in 2021. Bye. <laughs>